Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show, another special edition where I actually taped a podcast, uh, an audio podcast, but since I did it through Zoom, I was able to capture the video and it actually came out pretty good. So I'm going to turn this episode into uh, kind of a combination of the audio podcast and a regular video episode because I've got some content to provide. So sit back and listen to this special episode in an interview with his with a company in Spain called Hispano Suiza. Enjoy. Heard. Um, it's always an exciting time going on in the EV marketplace, and as you folks know, I always try to find a unique and uh, different stories that you may not know about. And uh, I was uh, contacted by this company. I'm so stoked and excited to have them on for this show. Uh, I have Mr. Joan Oris. He's the Chief Technology Officer for an automobile manufacturer based out of Spain called Hispano Suiza. How are you, sir? Oh, fantastic. Thanks. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> and it's great to meet you. And thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you're based in Barcelona, so I'm very surprised that the uh, Zoom call is going as well as it is right now. So hopefully I don't I don't curse it with that, uh, as this is a large uh, going across the pond international. Well, listen, thank you very much again for taking the time and, and for reaching out to talk to me, because um, it, it is a company that I'm not that aware of and what you folks have been doing on the electrification uh, scheme of things. Um, for listeners and viewers, you know, um, Hispano Suiza, it, you guys are have been around a long time. I mean, go back to 1904, the roots, um, a, a Spanish based car brand um, with all kinds of different products that have been developed throughout this year. And we will get into the electrification, but maybe you could give me just a quick history lesson on the company. Yeah, sure. I mean, Hispano Suiza was a company that was born in 1904, uh, so more than 100 years ago. Uh, here in Spain. And during 30 years, uh, Hispano Suiza was really a luxury brand selling uh, the most amazing vehicles and really competing directly with Rolls Royce. And um, including uh, all the kings of Spain have a car of Hispano Suiza. And, and they also were involved in racing. They developed some, some vehicles and make some racing. And they were in all the auto shows around the world, also in the US, showing, showing the vehicles. And um, the, the, com the company was based in, uh, in, uh, in, in to have the maximum technology, but at the same time to respect the exclusivity and the luxury. And, and this was really the concept and the philosophy of the brand. And uh, it was um, it was a shame, but the company stopped just after after uh, the second uh, war, the Second World War, uh, production of of, um, of automobiles, no? and our, our, about um, stop production of cars. And was really really a shame for uh, for the world because the cars were amazing until that until that moment and was a really nice brand. Mm -hmm. So the family the family finally who have the uh, the the who have the property of the brand who is the, really the 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 grandson of uh, the founder of the of that company wants to recover uh, the history wants to recover the brand wants to recover mm -hmm. the. So he was looking to, to return to the market, to return to the world, uh, showing the same concept, no? showing the technology plus luxury, plus, uh, plus elegance and plus exclusivity. No? Mm -hmm. And trying to, to get something on the market that was really, really impressive to everybody. So when, uh, when, when we meet him and we understand the spirit that, that, that he had behind and the, and the goal that he had and the view that he had, we say, well, we're 100% sure we have to go to, to electric vehicle because this is the future. We have to show technology. We have to show the power and the performance of, a, of an incredible vehicle. And uh, we have the technology to make this on, on electric. And uh, let's try to join. Let's try to join electrification plus luxury in one car. And then suddenly appears this Panasuita Carmen. And this is what, what we have on the hands now. When did uh, that realization that electrification is actually more than just some sort of novelty, you know, in in an environmental type of concern element for consumers? When when did you guys realize that? Was that five years ago, three years ago? Do you have any sense of timing? To be honest, from myself as a CTO, I dream on electric vehicles from twenty years ago. I already oh, have okay. done my first electric vehicle twenty years ago. That was a solar car to make a race in Australia, and that was amazing. And after right. that, I, I, I always were pushing for um, for electric mobility, making a, a lot of different cars. And uh, 
And uh, I was also involved on, on the Formula E project from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, Formula E is like the, the Formula One for electric vehicles. Yes. And uh, I was with it's the team. It's much quieter. <laughs> yes, much exactly. quieter. But, yeah. but the show and the motion is, uh, is including higher than Formula One. Yeah. And uh, we won the first season. And we get a, a lot of experience during six years in, in, in Formula E. And finally, uh, this experience, this, this knowledge was, was also um, one of the points that we put on the table to explain to the family, we can be on top of technology. We can be at the maximum level. We can offer you a car that really will show how the cars will be in future. And, uh, and that's the reason that also trying to, um, to, um, to keep the goal that we have, uh, that, we, that we say from race to road, uh, technology yeah. transfer uh, we are trying to uh, to keep that that technology that knowledge inside the Spanish Rita Carmen and how difficult is it to take a vehicle before we really dive into to your electric uh, your electric offering how difficult is it take to take a vehicle from the track to the road as you said because there's a lot of differences a lot of things that consumers you know that you have as an as a manufacturer need to take into account when you're going to take a car that would be you know, uh, burning it up at a track, but that needs to be, you know, all the safety elements and all the, the, the issues around that. How difficult is that process? Sure, it's, it's, it's a huge difficult, but mm -hmm. if you start from the point that you have the, the technology for the, for the batteries and powertrain, obviously it's a good start. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and uh, and, and I, I really feel that the Formula E is like uh, Formula One long time ago, where really uh, the people can, can investigate, can learn a lot, no? It's, if you remember, in Formula One is, the, is, is where we discovered, for example, the ABS or, or the active suspension. And, and later, I mean, for sure, all the cars now on the market really have ABS yes. uh, as a system for brakes. No? But this was discovered in, inside Formula One. So this is, this is what happened actually in, in, in Formula E. It's uh, the place where we're investigating on batteries, on regeneration, on, uh, on the BMS, on the motors inverters on the charging system so it's a place to really to to learn and uh, and then to to make a transfer of this technology to the to the street cars so then on top of that obviously you have to uh, to increase the safety you you have to work with the noise you have to work with aerodynamics you have to work uh, with um uh, how to say exclusivity and nice interiors <laughs> that obviously in, in motorsport you don't need <laughs> uh, and just you are trying to save weight so here in the Hispano Suiza we give the comfort that the driver needs finally we are building a dream is, is what we say okay we are building an amazing dream for the drive for a driver no? and have to be really have to feel the comfort and have to feel the performance at the same time Absolutely correct. And uh, yeah, you know, you're right. I think a lot of listeners and viewers may forget that there's so much advancements in technology that we take for granted today, but that have their roots in the racing, you know, and, and let's talk about that dream that you mentioned. So what you've built and what you brought to market are, are is a line of vehicles from called Carmen. It's the Carmen and the Carmen Boulogne. And these are your fully electrified vehicles um, that you develop. Were they based on an existing chassis or did, is this a ground up electri electrified design? We developed completely the car from zero, completely. Mm -hmm. So external design first. And when we get exactly the, the external design that we went, uh, we make uh, the aerodynamic uh, check with a CFD and, and we make simulations and we evaluate how the car have to be. Uh, from front subframe to the rear subframe, everything is in fiber carbon. So just you have aluminum parts for the wishbones, upright, some part of suspension. Really everything was, was built in house, suspension, brakes, steering, all the battery concept, uh, the powertrain, the transmissions, um, all, the, all, the, all the interiors. Finally, it's the car is a production is, is really artisanal. So finally, we are we, we not have a production line to make 1,000 vehicles. We are really artisanal uh, mechanics uh, building the car with, with their hands. And we spend like months to build one car. Uh, and, and all the buildings are coming from the heart of the mechanics. <laughs> so, uh, exactly. so, so really, finally, it's, 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 it's what we are doing. And the most important, we invite the customer to come to house and to make a special car for them. So they come and they choose exactly the color that they want, how they want the seat, how they want the steering wheel, how they want interiors, and we put exactly the colors that they are that they are asking for 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 the car. And uh, finally, 
but they what they have as a result is really an exclusive card that you cannot see another on the world. Building your own platform that offers that is the way to go, and uh, and all those advantages. So you mentioned uh, on your models that you use it's all carbon fiber, lightweight uh, materials, uh, but still very safe, and offering the rigidity and the safety that you would get if you were let's say all steel or or, or other components. Is that correct? Yeah, well, in, in, including better. I mean, it's it's not. I mean, fiber carbon well use it uh, and uh, and obviously we have experience on simulation for front crash rear crash side crash mm-hmm. and also we have done a lot of tests uh, with the vehicle so we can really guarantee that the, the car is, is really safe and uh, you not have any issue on the, on on that side i mean and everything is homologated by right? the normal regulation so finally you have a you have a car that uh, 100% you can trust on it uh, so this vehicle, let's talk about some of the specs. Uh, uh, and now this is uh, has a battery size. Um, if I have my notes here, uh, of eighty kilowatt hours. Is that correct? Yeah, it's 86, 86, 86. kilowatt hours. Yeah. Okay. And this is a uh, in-house sourced battery solution, correct? You're you're yes, working sure. with, I guess, one of the major suppliers and integrating that into your your systems, or is this something that you no. co-developed yourselves? No, we just choose on the market which is the best sell. The lithium cell that uh, really adapt to our, our necessities, looking at discharge capacity, weight, and uh, and from that we will completely the the full architecture of the battery. So we create the modules, we put the BMS, we put all the yeah. electric loom, uh, we make the cooling system, and uh, and and we complete all the casing with the fuses and distribution box on top. So it's is a hundred percent developed uh, in-house battery pack. Are you able to say what? manufacturer what supplier you use for the cells is it one of the leading guys like lg cam or ski or some panasonic it's a pharmacist company pharmacist is uh is a um, company from us who have a uh, headquarter in san francisco and uh, okay. have um, the factory in china and now a factory also in germany and are, are doing yeah. also production for uh for a main uh, manufacturers also in, in germany at this moment yes it's a standard but looking looking obviously uh, the maximum capacity of discharge. So you have obviously different cells on the market. Yep. What we are looking here is, um, is, uh, is a cell that you can go to a, to a 15C that we call, so that is that you can, you can have a big range of discharge for the battery to get the maximum power. So not forget that the power of the car is, is 1000 horsepower. Yep. And uh, uh, on the rear axle, and uh, and then what what you need is is not only to look uh, to save weight, it's also to have the possibility to discharge this energy from the battery. Yeah, people may forget that when you're when you're flooring, uh, you know, pressing the accelerator down on an EV and going real fast, there's a lot of heat that builds up on that discharge, mm-hmm. right? So you do need a really good thermal management system, which you mentioned that you've developed your own cooling and thermal management for the battery pack system here to, 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 again, you know, negate that heat element. We'll talk sure. about some of the specs. You mentioned the horsepower, just, you know, I, I worked it out to just be under um, 1100 horsepower, but certainly up in that range, you've got almost 1200 foot pounds of torque. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, is this an, an all wheel, a dual engine, a dual motor setup or just a single? Yeah, no, it's a dual, a dual motor on the rear with yep. a reduction that goes to each, each wheel on the rear. Mm-hmm. And then, and then we have a torque vectoring system to manage them. Yeah, I mean, we've got, you know, zero to 100K specs, and I'm reading here from your sheet of, of under two and a half seconds, which is, you know, blistering fact, uh, blistering. I mean, people are making a big deal of, out of uh, Tesla's Model S uh, Plaid that just came out, which is, you know, giving 2.9 uh, kind of ranges. But, you know, here we have something that even is, is much faster than that. Um, can you talk a little bit more about some of the specs on the vehicle? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that you, you you told about the main about the main wines. The the, um, the weight is important, obviously, and, and that's the reason that we are going to to fiber carbon. So don't 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 forget that uh, you are speaking now about Tesla, and uh, it's a fantastic car. But not, don't forget that they, they are really close to uh, two thousand six hundred kilos. Uh, yes. so, um, that's that's the reason that we can maybe achieve a little bit better acceleration doing everything in fiber carbon. So. We have a weight that is a, a, um, a, a little bit lower than 1,800 kilos, mm-hmm. and that's the reason that with the power that we have, you can you can have this amazing acceleration. Um, and then, yeah, about, about what more about performance? I mean, uh, you can do. Everybody's asking me what is really the range that I can do with this car, and I said 
well, it depends. I mean, if, if you drive this car like, like your mother, you can do 500 kilometers. But <laughs> yeah. if you are really using the 1,000 uh, horsepower that you have, so uh, then uh, the range is many, many, many lower. But It's going to be much lower. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, but, you do support DC fast charging. I understand it's up to um, 80 kilowatt. Um, our 80 kilowatt of a DC fast charging. And it'll yes, come with yes. DCS I, I combo, think, I take it. DCS I think I test already un until 100 kilowatts. It's no, it's no problem to uh, 100, to make okay. mm -hmm. then, yeah, 100 kilowatts. Yeah, and um, of DC, and uh, we are using a CCS2 CCS2 type of, okay. uh, of okay. charging. So that's great. So the vehicle can take advantage of of more of the ultra high speed charging elements like Ionity and all these others that are, are throughout Europe and and of course sure. and EA and EC here. Mm -hmm. And we offer to the customers also um, the charger included if if they want. But obviously, the idea is that they can charge this to, to any place. Okay, we don't want to have the, the Tesla exclusivity system. We really want to offer something that is a standard and they can go to any place to charge the car. Can you talk about some of those interior finishes and the, and the design language around that? Yeah, sure. I mean, as I told you, the customer have the possibility to come and choose the interiors. Okay, so for example, we have done uh, all, all the special, um, so the seats are obviously electric seats that you can move and adapt to your position electronically, um, but also he can choose um, exactly the colors and the color of the line and including, he can put his name on the on the seat if he wants, uh, this is completely open. And then, uh, for example, we can use uh, all the boot uh, system to, um, to print on top of the dashboard. So the dashboard can be, in a different colors or can be in a boot material. Um, you can also choose the, the steering wheel and the size of the steering wheel and obviously the material and colors that, that he wants to use. And uh, yeah, all, all the materials that we are using on, on, the, on the interiors are, um, are the best materials that you can find on, on, on the market, obviously, to give this exclusivity and a luxury uh, vehicle to the, to the driver. <laughs> You know, it's a gorgeous looking machine. I, I look, like I said, I looked at a lot of the videos and the picture is absolutely stunning. Um, these are now available, as, as I, I asked just before we press the record button. I wasn't sure what state of production, but you, you're saying that these are in full production. They're orderable. You're delivering vehicles. Um, can you talk about the price points and, you know, what kind of, uh, not necessarily quantities per year, but what's the average order cycle takes? Because these are, as you mentioned, a lot of the hand built. Okay, maybe I'm coming to the site, but it's Dave who have to answer that. But uh, I will just tell that uh, yeah. we have, the idea is to make a collection of a uh, 20 cars. Okay, okay. the Carmen will be 20 cars, and and okay. the Carmen Bologna it will be a collection of five cars. Five. So okay. it's really, really small exclusive. collection, mm -hmm. and 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 because we want to keep this exclusivity. Okay, yeah. we want it to to have. Um, <laughs> it's one that is coming to US. Uh, yeah, soon. and one to the US, and one yeah. to Mexico. So there yeah. You. That's awesome. And you know, how long does it take from an order um, that's locked in to delivery? What's that? Approximately, cycle? yeah, it's approximately six months. Six and months then after, ago. yeah, after six months, we organize an experience for the driver. So it's, okay. it's not just to send the car. So we invite the, the customer, sorry, to to come to the, to mm -hmm. our facilities uh, to see the factory and to see um, uh, all the castle that the family have and to yes. enjoy the, the experience of Hispano Suiza, learning more about the legend of Hispano Suiza and what was 100 years ago yeah. and how um, Hispano Suiza have, has reborn and how Hispano Suiza look at his future. No? So it's, mm. it's an amazing experience that we organize uh, during a weekend and uh, this is what what we are trying to, to sell to the customer as, uh, as a nice experience yeah. when, when he's buying the car. Excellent. Yeah, no, I certainly get that. And uh, and just last question then, because uh, we're we, we're close to running out, out of time here on my Zoom call. Um, you know, how does this impact the future of the company? Is this a directional change? Are you going to be seeing more investments and more involvement into the electrification side of things? For sure, this is this is the first step. I know I know the the goal is to close this first step, no? So to uh, to close um, the the sales of these vehicles, to keep the customers happy, and to put the the Hispano Suiza on 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 top of the luxury and uh, and um, super electric cars on on the market, mm -hmm. and this is the goal that we have for the next for the next two years. Um, and obviously, we are we are dreaming about the next step. So we are discussing with the family what, what can be the next step, and it still is not not announced. So I cannot speak a lot about that. 
Yep, understand. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but the idea now is just uh, is just to sell that Hispan Suiza have returned here to stay. It's not just a prototype. It's not just a small project. It's a brand that have reborn and that uh, will have a continuity on on his life and on the history. Excellent. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, you know, because once once you're into electrification, it's kind of hard to give it up because you get that taste, and uh, it really is a good taste, especially for for where you guys are coming from. Well, I really appreciate your time and, and telling me about the story of the company, how you guys have developed this beautiful vehicle, uh, the suite of, of vehicles here, and and where you're going as a company. It's refreshing to hear. I want to thank you very much for, again for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to me. Hispano Suiza is the company. Uh, Joan Orus is chief technology officer for their organization. Very smart guy. I hope one of the models are, are coming to Canada because if they are, I'd, I'd love to uh, reach out to the owner at some point and, and go see it and uh, take some as a video. And if I'm ever in Europe, which I do try to get to from time to time, I'll uh, maybe reach out to the ladies and try to organize a visit or something to the to the. Sure, you're invited. Under the sun. Thank you. Thank you. I love Spanish food, so there's no problem <laughs> traveling <laughs> there, that's for sure. So again, uh, thank you very much for taking the time, which is gracias. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thanks to you to give us the opportunity to explain this project and to dream together. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Something new from around the world as I try to get my content out there. Again, thank you very much for watching and for um, uh, on YouTube and for subscribing. If you haven't, please do always like your comments. Love to hear what you think. And uh, always try to get back to each and every comment. Of course, humbled for my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Thank you very much. If you're interested, check out the link below and you can get more information. And continue to watch the EV revolution uh, and the EV evolution. Lots of things going Going on as you can see appreciate you taking the time to tune in and everybody please stay safe and until the next episode i will see you when i see you take care and bye-bye